Hello, it's Bobby from Decoding here, and this is the seventh video in the building and launching a real Django website series. Please, please, please subscribe and like, it's massively helpful. I won't keep going on about it, but please subscribe and like, it's very, very helpful. Uh, this is, uh, like I say, it's the seventh video. We're really cooking on gas now. In the last video, link to it is up there. We really made progress. We added some CSS to the HTML files or the templates that we had already built in previous videos and we managed to get the website working on the server. It doesn't look pretty, but it's working. So what we're gonna do in this video is we're going to handle errors. So we're gonna work through Django's error handlers for 400, 403, 404, and 500. So what we'll do, So what we'll do, we will fire up a server quickly. So work on uh, the demo. Python managed, oh, 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 manage.py run server. Happy days, you can go to localhost or you can go to 127.0.0.1. I always go to localhost, it's not the end of the world, let's just update that. I'm, I'm on a browser incognito because I want the CSS to be loaded each time. And this is what we've got. Ugly website, but it's doing the trick. So what I wanted to show you is you've been, if you go into other websites, you'll see that if you put in any old gibberish in the URL, if there isn't a URL pattern that matches what you put in there, it will come up with an error, such as 404. And that is page not found. So I'll put a slash in here, go like that. Page not found, 404. But what we don't want to see is this ugly ass screen when we go live. We want something that is in keeping with our website, something that we've built. So we are going to overwrite what Django has straight out of the box with error handlers for 400, uh, 403, 404, and 500. So there is a link to Django's uh, docs that go into great detail about doing it, but I'm gonna walk you through how to implement error handling. So there we have it, that's the browser. This is, so we've got the server running this, open up sublime text. There we go, I don't need to be seeing any of this. Okay, go back into my other project and what we need to do is, so the error handling, actually let's open up the docs here. So these are the error handlers here. Yeah, so it's a handler 400, 403, 404 and default. Um, so Django is doing something with errors in the background anyway, but what you need to do, you need to actually um, tell Django to use a different template when it comes across one of these errors. And the way we do that is we have, we add a variable into our URL conf file. So we go into URLs in here, uh, just above the URL patterns, it can go anywhere really, but we'll, we will add a handler 400. So this tells Django to not use what they have out of the box or what they've coded, to actually use our template that we have got for them to use. And we will have did demo dot views dot, and we'll call it handler 400. There is no views.py file at the minute, but don't worry about that, we'll, we'll soon get there. 400, that'll be 403, that'll be 404, and that will be 40, uh, sorry, 500. Now in the next video, we'll be working with 503. But don't worry about that for now, we'll get to that. You hold your horses. Right, 500, right, so if we now change this to 403, 404, we're referring to views that aren't even written yet. 500, brilliant. And that's it, we don't need any more there, but what we do need is a views file to go into our main directory. So open up a file, or a new file, we'll save this as, and we'll call it views.py. What we want to do is we want to bring in render. When you have the views.py file that comes with any app, comes with this line of code right at the top anyway. So it's from 
Django.shortcuts import render. And then what we want, we want to build four views. Now the views are going to be called what we just um, added here. So uh, handle of 400. So these are just function base views. And we need to pass in two things. We need request and we want exception. And we only want one line of code and that is return render request and then we want to stipulate what template to use now we want to use a template called 400 html for this one and 403 404 and 500 we haven't got those yet but we will build them okay so we've got uh, 400.html and this is status equals 400 as an integer that is it we don't want the bracket there sorry I've buggered up there we don't want to end it that's it that's all we need for the handler 400 and we want to copy that down nothing too complicated for all of them and then just adjust the text so we'll change the um, function name or the view name and we'll change that one to 500 uh, all we need to do is we need, now need to change the template names of each of them. 404, and the last one is 500. And 403, 404, and 500. The only difference is on the uh, handle of 500, we don't need an exception. There we go. Let me take that out. And that's it i think um, i've got that down actually rather than status i've just got anyway let's leave it let's see if that works okay so there are views if you look in the urls we're referring to did demo dot views dot handler not e there we go my typos once again i'm not known for good typing so we go we've, we've now we're, we're now you're not using what comes out of the box with Django. We now def we've defined our own views. And we now need to define or, or work out where we're going to have the 400.html files. Um, remember in main, we had in main, we've got a directory called templates. And then one called main. And within that, we then have all of the files for the main app. Well, these are kind of global um, HTML documents. They want to be used in no matter what app we have. If we have a user's app or, or an e-commerce app, we still want to be out, have access to these, um, the 400s and the 404s. So to that end, what we do is we add a directory in here called templates. And it's within there where we will have all of our HTML documents. So if we go and open one of these we don't want to do anything fancy um, we can have exactly the same html document as we've been building so let's have index and we will save this as we go here go into templates we'll save this as 400.html the only difference being we want to change the text so this one a 400 error means bad request Okay, we will save this again as 403. And 403 is a permission denied. Denied. Save it as 404. This is page not found. And then lastly, we'll save it as 500. And there we go. And this is well, internal server error. That's it. We have now got 
um, new HTML documents for all of the um, error handling, such as 400, 403, 404, and 500. So if we, let's, let's try and test it. We go to settings. To test this, we will need to have um, something in the allowed host. So let's have local host. And we'll also have 127.0.0.1, just for giggles. And we want to change this to false. So we're no longer in debug mode. The reason being, if that stays in true, it doesn't do anything with error handling. It shows you that ugly screen that we looked at earlier. If you have it as false, then it will just use the straight out of the box template that Django has, which is a full white screen. It would just say internal server error or whatever the case may be. So we'll have that as false. We're now essentially in development mode, but we're saying that we're in production and we're saying that these hosts are allowed. So let's have a look at what this does. Okay, I figured out what it was. Uh, there's a couple of things here. So um, where we were added templates here, what I forgot to do is I forgot to reference that templates directory in the templates variable in settings.py. So you do have this section here. I think I referenced it in the first video and I said, we'll come back to that you add templates. So we've just added that templates directory. You need to refer to it here. So when Django is looking for the 404 or the 500, it knows where to look. So that's what we've done. Also, yeah, so I've added localhost and 127.0.0.1 here and changed the debug to false. But because of the setting configuration we've got in URL, so if debug uh, is true, then it comes up with a static. We can't access the static files but it will display the HTML document. In production, it will look very, very different anyway, so don't worry about that. Uh, if we fire up, uh, let's break that. If we fire up a server, there we go, so that's working. And if we open up an incognito screen, local host, it'll come up with an ugly screen again. Um, but if we were now to put um, any old jibu, gibberish, any old gibberish, easy for me to say, in here, it should come up with page not found. So page not found is what we added into our 404 doc. So the handlers are actually working, although the screen looks terrible, is because we're do, we're testing it, we're mimicking production in development, and we're trying to circumvent how it works straight out of the box. But it is pulling from the HTML document, and when we go live and we're on a live server, we won't have any issues such as this, it will look beautiful. So. That is the end of today's video. We are really cooking on gas now. We've got a project, it's up there. We've got some URLs which do display when it's in debug mode. And we've also got some handlers. So we're looking at 400, 404, 403, and 500. In the next video, I'll show you how to implement uh, one of the, uh, there's a library called Django uh, maintenance mode. And that allows us to um, add a maintenance mode uh, a template to our project and we bring that all into the fold with the handlers as well and it's, it, we use the code 503 so that's why we're doing that after this video so that's the end of the video please subscribe please like and i'll be seeing you in the next video thank you bye